In this video, I want to show you how to enable SSH key authentication from your Windows 10 machine to your Linux machine. To do this, you need a program called PuttyGen, and you need Putty to make the connection, and you need also FileZilla. Let's start by downloading Putty. Open your web browser and go to putty.org. Click on the link to download Putty. And then depending on your Windows 10 architecture, choose the version of Putty either 32-bit or 64-bit. I have 64-bit Windows, so I'm going to download the 64-bit version of Putty. Once the file is downloaded, click on Open File and we need to install Putty. So click Next and then keep everything by default and you click Install. If prompted, click Yes. Putty should be installed. I unchecked here Read Me File because I don't need to see this file. And then click on Finish. Next step is to download FileZilla. So go to FileZilla dash project dot org and hit enter on your web browser and then click on download FileZilla client and we need also the Windows 64 bit so click on it and I'm gonna install the FileZilla free so I'm gonna click on download on the free version and the download should start when the download finishes also, we need to install FileZilla. So wait for it to finish. And then click on Open File. And if prompted, also click on Yes. And then click I Agree. And here choose if you want to install it only for you or for anyone on this computer. I'm going to keep it on anyone. Click on Next and keep everything by default and click on next, next and then next again if you are prompted to install promotional software feel free to either accept or decline the offer here I don't want to install any additional software so I'm gonna click on decline and then the installation of FileZilla client should start I don't want to start it now so I'm gonna uncheck start FileZilla and click on finish so now we installed Putty and then we installed FileZilla. The first step to do now is to open PuttyGen to generate a private and public key combination to use for authentication. So let me key in, in the search area PuttyGen and then choose PuttyGen and run it. And PuttyGen is used to generate a key combination as I told you. The private key always will stay on your personal PC and the public key should be on the Linux machine. I'm going to show you step by step how to do this. First, for the options, I'm going to keep it on RSA authentication and I'm going to keep it on 2048 bits. You can change it, of course, if you want more, you can put it at 4096, but I'm going to keep it by default as it is. And to generate the key, you should click on generate and Putty will tell you to move your mouse in the empty area so to create randomness and this is the public key generated after the key is generated we need first to save the private key but before saving the private key I want to protect it with a passphrase so this is another layer of protection in case someone steals your private key they cannot use it to access the server because they need the passphrase also so I'm gonna put a passphrase here And click on save private key and I'm gonna name it my private key of course feel free to name it whatever you want click on save so now we have the private key the next step we need to select everything here and upload it to a file on the server so I'm gonna show you step by step how to do this with FileZilla so keep this open I'm gonna just put it to the side here and in the search box type FileZilla and hit enter to open FileZilla 
we need to establish a connection to our Linux machine. So here I have the IP of my Linux machine. You should get the IP of your Linux machine. If you don't know what is the IP of your Linux machine, on your Linux machine, open a terminal window by pressing Ctrl Alt T and key in IP space A and you get the IP of the machine. So here the IP of my machine is 192.168.74.133. And my username is KST and put the password. Of course, here put your username and your password. And the port is 22. And then click on Quick Connect. I don't want to save the password. So I chose Do Not Save Password. And then click on OK. The connection should be established. Notice here that FileZilla connected directly to the home folder of the user we used to connect to the Linux machine with. And a notice about SSH key authentication is that it is configured per user on your Linux machine. So here we need to configure it for the user KST. If you have multiple users on your Linux machine, you need to configure key authentication for each user. So now for KST here, stay in the home directory and here browse in FileZilla to see if you have a folder called dot ssh if you have a folder called dot ssh open it otherwise create one so here i don't have a folder called dot ssh so i'm gonna create one to create one under home kst right click kst and choose create directory and here you see that it is creating a directory on your home kst and then the directory dot SSH exactly as I am putting it with small case letters and then click on OK. And here under .SSH you need to create a file called authorized underscore keys. I'm going to open SSH and you see it is empty of course because we just created it. In case you had .SSH before on your machine that was created and you had a file called authorized underscore keys you need to download the file to your machine and modify it. But here I don't have the file, so I'm going to create it on my machine and then I'm going to upload it into the Linux machine. To do this, you need to select all this text here. So I'm going to select it. Careful, make sure that you are selecting all the characters. Right click on it and then choose copy. I'm going to create the file under the downloads folder. I'm going to open the folder downloads. I'm going to right click here and choose new and choose text document and make sure to choose text document and name it authorized underscore keys and then remove the extension. It's very important to remove the extension and hit enter. Press yes to confirm and right click on it and choose open with and then choose notepad and then click OK. So here's the file opened. Now remember we copied the public key before. All we have to do now is right click here and choose paste. So this is a public key pasted in the authorized keys file. Once again, if you had already the authorized keys here file, don't overwrite it. Just drag it to your downloads folder or to any folder you want to work in and then open it and add the public key to it. So this way you'll have all the keys in the same file. So now I don't have it, so I don't have this problem. I'm gonna close this one and just click on save. And here I'm gonna click on refresh. So I right clicked here and then chose refresh. And here you have your authorized key files. Just drag it your SSH folder and here the file will be transferred to your SSH folder on your Linux machine. We need still to do two things. The first thing is you need to right click SSH, choose file attributes and here you need to change the numeric value to 700. This way you will protect this folder and then for authorized keys right click on it and choose file permissions and change it to 600 and I click OK. And now let me close PuttyGen. I don't need it anymore. 
And let me close FileZilla also. I don't need it anymore. And let me authenticate now to my Linux machine using PuTTY. So I'm going to open PuTTY. And then in the host name, I'm going to put the IP of my Linux machine. So it's 192.168.74.133. The SSH on this machine is enabled and it is listening on port 22. If you don't have SSH enabled on your Linux machine, you can look at my video in the description to see how you can enable it. I have a video that will show you this step by step. So here after you put your host name and you choose the port, SSH is selected by default. If it is not, select SSH. And then under connection, SSH, click on auth and then browse to find your private key. So remember I saved it in the downloads folder. So this is the private key. Click on it and then click open. And now when you click open, we should be authenticated to our Linux machine using the private key. So here, when it asks you to log in as, you need to precise the user that you configured for key authentication. So in my case, it is KST. I put KST and then hit on enter. And you see here that it is authenticating me with the public key that we just uploaded with FileZilla to our Linux machine. And here, because my private key has a passphrase, it is asking me for my passphrase. So I'm going to put it. And here I am authenticated to my Linux machine on my Windows 10 PC using the key authentication. And that was all. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. If you did, please share it, subscribe to my channel, and give this video a thumbs up. Thank you for watching.